Hey guys, before you watch this video that I recorded from my phone, I, um, I want to give you a little um, suggestion. Um, I find myself doing this and it works great. If you are somebody that doesn't have a whole lot of time to watch lengthy videos or listen to them, or maybe somebody talks a little slow and they seem to go on, um, you could speed up. I, don't, I can't tell you how to do it. I learned it by going online and saying, can I watch a video in faster motion? How can you speed up a video on YouTube? So I went out online, found out how I could do it with my iPhone. And so now I know how to um, turn a video up a little speed. I think, you know, you can play it at normal speed. You can put it up to one and a quarter speed faster, one and a half faster, one and three quarters faster, and two times faster. That's what my phone allows. I usually put the videos at 1.50, which is one and a half times faster. And, um, and I suggest, you know what, try watching my videos that are lengthy or even short, sh shorter, not the shorts, but I'm talking about, you know, if I have ones that aren't so lengthy, try it in a higher speed, whatever you choose, 1.5, 1.75, 2 if you want, and uh, it just goes a lot faster, and I think you'll enjoy it that way. All right, I hope you enjoy this video. Love you guys. In the book of Hebrews, it says that it is a labor to enter into God's rest. It's a struggle. It's a labor. It's exhausting <laughs> to enter into God's rest. The scripture doesn't say so. You know what? Don't try to enter his rest. No, it says labor to enter into that rest. Struggle. Give it all you can. Why is that? Well, you know, re resting is where you're not anxious you are not worried. You um, you are are not a uh, um, a meddler in other people's affairs. This is this is the truth. When you enter into rest, you are still. You are quiet. It doesn't mean you don't talk. It means you surrender, and you don't chase after things, but you let things come chasing after you if those things are to be used for tools in your life, for growth, for su sustenance, for yourself, for others, all of that, right? But the, the struggle is to rest. That, that, that's the struggle. And you will, you will not find yourself resting as you should because let's face it, if you're joined to the Lord as one spirit, like Paul says we are to the Corinthians, then your spirit, your true, who you truly are, if you think you're this body, think again. You, you are spirit. And your spirit is one with the Lord. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. There you are. You're joined to your Father as one in spirit. So if God is your spirit, then God is at rest. So where's the labor? Where's the struggle? What part of you is struggling in laboring to enter into that rest? It's your mind. That's why the scripture says all throughout the New Testament to change your mind. Metanoia in Greek. Change your thinking. Change the direction of your thinking. Not change your footsteps. Changing your footsteps direction is the Greek word epistrepho. But the Greek word for repent is to metanoia, change the way your thought process is going. Now, if your thoughts are not still, are not quiet, aren't in the same frequency as your spirit, then your thoughts are what's called wavering, right? wavering like like a ship at sea that's getting tossed to and fro in the ocean all over the place wavering right now you want your thoughts to be in the frequency of the spirit 
right? That that's what we are. That's what the struggle is for us, getting our thoughts tuned in to that frequency so that there is no static. There is no wavering. One thing that really makes it a struggle to enter into this place of rest is when your past comes back to haunt you. And if your past is haunting you, you are inwardly disturbed. You are now called a haunted house because your body is your house, but it's more than a house because it is a temple, which is a house, but it's holy. This is a holy house of the Holy Spirit of God who is one with you. Your true essence just resides inside of this place. And if you're haunted by your past, you're a haunted house. And you know what, you guys, your past we all have one. I mean, no matter what it is, we have some sort of a past. I'm not saying just a whole bunch of terrible things. I mean, you've got great memories and all this stuff, but we all have a past. And sometimes your past will come to try to haunt you. Somebody from your past you might not have spoken to in, let's say, 20 years. It's been that long. You guys haven't seen each other. You haven't spoken to each other. But 20 years ago... Your thinking was much different than your thinking is today. Were you the same person? You're the same person, but not the same personality. Do you understand? Your personality has changed. You might be the same person outwardly. Maybe you know you 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 look different a little bit. You you've 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 matured. You've aged. You time's gone on, but but you're still that person. But you are not the same personality because you've done a whole lot of mind change throughout the years, haven't you? And I'm going to tell you one thing and I'm going to just be really frank with you guys. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, okay? I want to say this and I'm going to say it out loud right now. We all have one thing in common if you are a human on this earth. All of us have one thing in common no matter who you are. No matter what your position is, no matter how famous you are, no matter who you are in this world, even if you are somebody that goes out, lays hands on the sick, and they are well, and, and you're doing the work of Christ on earth, no matter who you are, every human being has one thing in common for sure. Everybody's shit stinks. And that is the truth. And every one of us who think we're righteous because of the great things we've done in this world and the evil things we've abstained from doing in this world, every one of us that thinks that righteousness is something that is achieved, well, I would have to disagree. And if I want to back that up by scripture, I'm going to say Romans 5, 17, where righteousness is is given to you as a free gift through the abundance of God's grace. And that grace, if you're joined to the Spirit of God, that grace is in you. It doesn't have to come from outside source because the source is in you. And it's a gift. And I've lived it, I, I, I've been living in this grace. Huh. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't even aware I was living in His grace. But His grace has been abounding in my life for sure. Especially when my past comes back to me through maybe somebody else that I haven't heard from in years. Gives me a phone call to talk about my past and how it hurt not only them, but it hurt many others. Why? Why? Why did you do those things? Why did you used to do those things? Why? Tell me why. Somebody might need closure and it might and it, and it might be the the time for you to give them that closure. Because they're calling and asking about your past 
And even if it seems malicious and all that, you know what? Maybe it's actually good for you too. Because the one thing that I truly believe is, I believe that our past is washed away clean. We have, you know, it's not that we have to forget about the past, meaning just pretend it never happened because somebody might come along and remind you of the past. And you can say, you know what, get over it. Um, I have, I've moved on. I'm a different person now. And uh, I suppose you could do that, but maybe you want to actually listen to them. And if they're, will, if they're willing, if this person or family or whoever it is, is will, even if it's the voices in your head, you know, that, that keeps on bringing up your past, or maybe you're going through me, traveling down memory lane and you're looking at old pictures of yourself, you know, and then it triggers a memory. Maybe you see somebody in that picture and it triggers a memory and then suddenly your past just comes to haunt you. And some of us are thinking, man, is our past ever going to catch up with me where I go to jail or something like that, right? I mean, it, it can get pretty serious. What do you do? Do you just ignore it? There's some things you have to ignore. There's some things you have to ignore. Some people have narcissists that are chasing after them and want to do everything in their power to get you in trouble because you're no longer associated with the narcissist anymore. You broke free, right? And the narcissist, they always, it seems like they always come back trying to cause you trouble and making threats and everything. And there's times you have to just disconnect yourself from people completely, right? Just completely disconnect and let them deal with it. But we all have a past of some sort. And I I think, you know, I think wh whether you're troubled, if it comes catching up with you, or you're not troubled, or if you or if you think you have a clean past, the one thing I said we all have in common is uh, every one of us, our shit stinks. And I use that word for a reason because I don't want to sugarcoat any, anything, you guys. That is the truth. We all have that in common, right? We all have that in common, no matter what. That's why people want to sugarcoat that word because they want to pretend it doesn't it really exist and they want to pretend they don't do that. And no, no, it's shameful. Well, everybody does. Sorry. No matter who you are. So if your past, if your past is coming to um, tr try to haunt you, get you living in the past again, you know, how you deal with it with other people, that's up to you. But, but what I've found is always be willing to apologize, always be willing to listen, and always be willing to take credit for the things that you've done. J just own up to it. I'm not saying take, take credit as far as put it into your account. Because your account has been dealt with. Somebody took over your debt for you and paid it in full. You have to remember that. It's been paid in full, you guys. Your debt has been paid in full. Your past was two seconds ago. And what's the scripture say? Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own worries. Just be in the present, right? Be in the present. Don't be worried about anything. You know, your past was two seconds ago. That doesn't mean if you just hurt somebody two seconds ago, it's not going to catch up with you and you need to get over it. You, you actually need to ask yourself, why, why do I continue to do these things? Why do I continue to behave this way? Remember, your behavior is followed by your thinking. Your thinking doesn't follow your behavior. Your behavior follows your thinking. So we all need our thinking to change, right? To, to tune into the frequency of the spirit in you, which is Christ, which is God, which is love. God is love. And we don't want static and we don't want to waver around, right? It's tuning into who you truly are. I say this all the time. There, there's nothing more important than you figuring out in this world who you are. If you don't know who you are, who are you to tell other people what they should be or who they should be? If you don't even know. And, and, and listen, if you don't know, I'm not saying that's a big problem of you. Some of us has, have been so misled into thinking who we are through religion, through leaders, through TV, through Hollywood, through the news, through your school teachers, on and on and on it goes. And you took on an identity in this world where somebody else labeled you and now you got that label on yourself. And, and you know what? It's actually dissolving yourself of all these false identities that you've taken on so you can get to the true essence of 
who you are. And if you're one spirit with the Lord, that's pretty amazing. One spirit with the Lord. It doesn't say, this, this is interesting, you guys. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. The one who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Now, we know the Lord is Christ, of course. But why did Paul use the word Lord? Do you know Lord in Greek? Kyrios means master. Do you know that if you're joined to the spirit of the Lord, you're joined to the spirit of the master. And, and it says that you are one spirit with that master, that curios, one spirit with the master. So your spirit is master. You are a master craftsman. You are a master skillsman. You are master of the spirit. You are master. You're very tuned in. Your spirit's frequency is so tuned in, there's no separation from your spirit and the spirit of Christ himself, the spirit of God himself. You're one. Your spirit is master because you are joined to the spirit of the master as not two spirits, but one spirit. There's no separating that. Now, what do we do with this knowledge we just took in? What is knowledge if it doesn't, if it, if it just doesn't sink in? There's one thing to have knowledge of something, but it's another thing to truly know intimately. Your spirit intimately knows its identity. The true you knows who you are. But this mind in this world has forgotten. How many of you remember when you were a baby? How many of you, and maybe some of you do, but how many of you remember being a baby? How many of you remember coming out of the birth canal? How many of you remember being held by the doctors and the nurses? How many of you remember all of those years in detail of when you were a baby? Guess what? All of those memories are in you. They are in there. So the real you does remember. But there's something about your mind that just, it seems like there's an amnesia thing. That, like something, there's, your, your memories have been erased. You have forgotten. And listen, if, if you and I, if God knew us before the foundations of the world, that means we were always in God. That means our spirit, which is God's spirit, well, God was didn't create a new spirit of himself. He took from himself who he is, spirit, and that is who you are. Your essence is directly from God. So you've always been in God and you've always been in Christ because there's no separating God and Christ. That's why the Old Testament says the Elohim. It doesn't mean many, many gods. It means one essence, God. One spirit, one divine spirit. And you're in that spirit. So Elohim, which sounds plural, it just means it, it, there's many that have been, that are one. Many that are one, one spirit. I, I'm joined to the Lord as one spirit with him. If you're joined to the Lord as one spirit with him, and that person, and that person, and that person, that, that that's many spirits. You could say, just like Elohim, plural spirits, Elohim, plural gods, but it's actually one, one essence, one source, one spirit. And it's God. And that spirit is love. That's who you are. That's who you are. If we can dissolve ourselves of everything that we are not, then you'll just be standing there in the true, okay, this is who I am. Right? Now your mind's set on the things above, not set on the things below. It's not wavering anymore. But it's a difficult thing. You know, this is, the, we're, we're here on earth and we haven't put on our spiritually glorified bodies yet. You know, so everything's all perfectly in tuned. That's why the scripture says it is a labor for us to enter into that rest. The, the rest, which is in your spirit, your, the true you. It's getting your mind there. It's getting your mind there, you guys. There's an alignment. 
a unity, just like there's an alignment and a unity when a farmer takes two oxen, takes a yoke, joins them to get them together and, 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 the, and to move together as one. And during this training, sometimes one of the oxen that tries to tug against the one that's taking the lead, right? Until they work in harmony together. You've got the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is your leader. But you know what? Your mind, your carnal mind, this old mind, the one that remembers all of your past and all these problems and stuff like that and has carnal thinking, that mind is tugging against the spirit. But Christ doesn't leave you. He's still joined to you, right? you got the mind of Christ. You've got your mind. They're joined together. You, 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 that's why we're told, have us be single-minded, single-eyed. Keep it single, right? Think think in alignment in the frequency of the mind of Christ, which is yours. That's It's not separate from you. It's your true identity. It's your anointing. It's your choosing. It's your cho you're chosen. It is yours. You didn't work for it. You didn't earn it in the Bible. Reading the scriptures enough didn't put it there. It's just yours. Right? You did nothing to get to earn it or to gain it. It's yours. Now, one day I do think that there is going to be a time, because I've read it in scripture, where we come before the Bema seat, Bema, seat of Christ. I think what happens is we're all going to have to, um, we're all going to have to face everything. It, it'll be shown to us. And, and since we won't be sitting in a place of time, it's not going to take forever. We're going to see everything so quickly. It'll be it'll be like a flash, like a twinkling of an eye in this in this realm, this earth realm. You know, the, it, 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 God can show you a thousand years of things just like that in a realm that has no time in it, right? So, I do believe myself. That will get some sort of what people call a life review. It's where the things, whether you did that were good, the things that you did that were bad. Let's say that, you know, the stuff that, you know, you were helping people, the stuff that you weren't, the stuff that you were loving on people, other times you weren't, you know, that kind of thing. How it affected others, how it affected you, the ripple effect it has. I think we're all going to have to see the truth of what happened in our lives in detail and how it affected others. Not... To decide if you're going to get thrown into a fiery lake for eternity to suffer and burn, burn, burn. It's just to see the, just to see everything as the truth because the truth sets you free. Even the lies that you are living, when you can see the truth about why you are living those lies, you'll be set free. You understand? It is the truth that sets you free. It's not the, the true religion that sets you free like the Jehovah's Witnesses claim it is. No, it is the truth that sets you free. That truth is in Christ, which is in God, which is in your spirit. And if we all have to face and see the truth of everything, so be it. Thank you, Lord, that that is going to happen. I am thankful for it. So when past things do come up and they and it can haunt you, you guys, you might start worrying, oh my goodness, did my past just catch up with me? Not that you're purposefully trying to hide things, but there's a bunch of stuff that you would rather keep buried. We all know that. We all wish it would just be buried. You know, you're struggling hard enough to realize that you've been forgiven and it's forever. Why are you struggling that way? Because you were raised probably in a religious way, right? Questioning your identity. Instead of drawing you closer to God and your identity, it pulled you further away, further away. It added to the confusion, the Babylon, that's what Babylon means, confusion. So we all want our past to stay in the past, even if it was just two seconds ago. Even if you just did something, somebody was at a light, you were at a light, you, you, the person in front of you didn't go when the light turned green, you got frustrated, you had to honk your horn, then you got stirred up, you know, and, and you're just like, oh, why do I let this stuff stir me up? We all deal with stuff as humans on earth, and I don't care who, ha who claims to have mastered everything in their mind realm and in their body realm. Like I said, 
everybody's shit stinks. Everybody. You all take one and it stinks. That's the truth. We all have that in common, <laughs> right? So we're, all, we're all pretty even, Stephen. We're pretty equal, right? We're all equals. We don't need to be above anybody else. Everybody's got problems, but sometimes people don't face their stuff, right? They ignore it, but they want to put they want to point out everybody else's problems, what you've done wrong, but they they don't want to face their own stuff. That's the beauty of all of us getting some sort of a life review, you guys. Maybe I'll call this video life review. I don't even have a title. I just wanted to talk about this. So maybe I'll call it the life review. <laughs> Something to do with life review. Anyway, I'm going to get going. I love you guys. I hope this has blessed you. Listen, listen, laboring to enter into his rest. It is, it is a labor to trust, to rest, to believe, to have that faith, who you truly are, and, and, and I can't wait for the day where it's, we're totally tuned in mentally to that frequency where there's no static, where our minds are set in Christ, not wavering, set in Christ in a non-religious way. How, how beautiful that would be. In the meantime, I love you guys. God bless you all. Know who you are know who you are. You've been given so much. If you don't know who you are, you won't discover what you've got and you definitely won't learn how to use it and use it well. All right, you guys, God bless you. Love you. Talk to you all next time.